everybody? Yeah, you know what time it is. It's question and answer day. Let's see if we can find a song. Let's do our Swish and Swipe song. Get on in here. Swishing, swipe. I'm swishing, I'm swiping, but you won't hear me griping cause I'm blessing my house today. I really dig it, I get it, it only takes a minute to keep my house looking this way. And you should see me move when I'm getting in a groove with a candle. Attitude, I fly. So I, when I'm swishing and swapping, no, you won't hear me rapping because I'm blessing my house today. <clears throat> and that's right. I've made it, I have it. There's nothing hard about it. Just 15 minutes a day. I'm cleaning and flinging, I'll do my quick routines and I'll soon be able to play. And you should see me smile when I'm sprucing up this tile. It only takes a little while and I'm done. And it's fun <clears throat> when I'm swishing and swapping. No, you won't hear me rapping because I'm blessing my house today. Uh-huh. Here we go now. Swish and swipe. <laughs> round and round I scroll just a once around this tub and things I I'm gonna fly. I'm so high. When I'm swishing, I'm swapping. No, you won't hear me grabbing because I'm blessing my house today. And that's right. I'm blessing my house today. <clears throat> well, it's Thursday, and you know what that means. It is question and answer day. Um, if you've got any questions, put them in the chat. Uh, Liz will grab them and we'll have them for next week. So, uh, let's, uh, get some of our devotional done this morning. We're in Psalms 139. And I, I think we... We should um, hold off on that right now. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we praise you, Lord, for all the wonderful things that you do for us every day. We walk with you, Lord, and we're so happy to be your children. There's nothing better in the world than to be a child of God. Thank you, Lord for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for being a benevolent God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for every good thing that you do and everything you do is good. So thank you, Lord. Please be with my fly babies all over the world. Please keep the United Kingdom safe. Protect them. Queen Elizabeth is not doing well. The family's coming in, so please be with her. Please be with her. Help us, Lord, to be good. Especially good to ourselves, Lord, because you didn't make any junk. We are good. And to be kind to others. And help us 
to show the world who we are through our testimony. Thank you, Lord. All these things we ask in your son's holy name. The name of Jesus says it all. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Okay, it's September the 8th. <clears throat> Our future will be good and guaranteed. God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 through 11. That's just beautiful. That's just absolutely beautiful. Okay, we got some questions. We got some announcements. Here's the big announcement. We did inventory yesterday, and we're getting low on our carpet sweepers. Now, our carpet sweepers are in the ultimate pack. Now, when our carpet sweepers run out, ultimate pack is going away too. And right now, we got $100 off on the ultimate pack. So y'all get your, if you're wanting to buy the Ultima pack, get it now because in, before you know it, we're going to be out of it. We're going to be out of carpet sweepers and the Ultima pack is going to totally change. Now, those of you who have pets that haven't purchased a carpet sweeper yet, you don't know what you're missing out on. I mean to tell you, you have no clue what you're missing out on. We've had testimonial after testimonial on how wonderful this carpet sweeper is when you have pets. So let's get it done. Okay, we got questions. Some zones in my house don't need to be don't need to be decluttered. So should I start in on cleaning the zones that are clear? Or should I declutter in a different zone until the house is decluttered? Keep decluttering. Keep decluttering. Because the more clutter you have, the harder it is to keep your house clean. I promise you, if you will keep decluttering, if your room, if the room, if the zone we're in right now, I'm telling you, every time we go to a different zone, stay in that zone. If, but if that zone is decluttered i'm telling you you can still find something to declutter in it so just even if you just grab one thing out of that zone to get rid of your your that zone's going to be better but keep decluttering this room right here used to be piled to the ceiling i mean piled to the ceiling i had a bathtub sitting in front of this bay window and everything was piled to the ceiling i mean piled to the ceiling and I started doing a 27 fling boogie three times a day. I couldn't even open the door, y'all. And I would open the door, reach in, grab a box, and go into my um, coffee table, which was cleared off. And I would sort through that box and to give away and put away and throw away. And my rule was nothing could come back in this room. And doing that, I did a... 27 fling boogie, things to give away, things to throw away, and 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 not very long at all, this room got emptied. But I had a rule, couldn't come back in here, and it had to go directly to the car or the trash can. And I didn't put a, I didn't put up other things because they couldn't go in this room. This was my catch-all room. So keep decluttering. Whatever you do, do not stop decluttering. I still declutter all the time. All the time. And I have the same rules. I was a member of the Fly Lady Yahoo groups. I'm missing the communication with the community. And I'm wondering if there is any Facebook groups for people for for fly lady people like that um we have our big facebook group 
there are lots of little groups, but they're they're done by other by other people. Uh, you can start a thread, or Liz can start a thread every day where y'all could talk to each other in in our little fly lady community. But there's six hundred some thousand people on that on that page. Six hundred thousand or more. I haven't looked at the number. Somebody look up the number. I haven't looked at it in several months. <clears throat> so folks, maybe you want to have a fly lady buddy, somebody that you know, that you've told about fly lady that's doing it. Maybe y'all do it together. Maybe you and your daughter do it together. Um, there's lots of fun ways to be in the community on YouTube, on YouTube, you can post under one of the shows and maybe find some buddies, but you got to be careful. You got to be careful because there's a lot of people that post. I work 40 hours Monday through Friday. Saturdays end up being our family's laundry and house cleaning day, which takes us about six to eight hours. Sunday is our family day since Saturday is spent so much time blessing the home. How can I fix this? Do your routines during the week. You're procrastinating all week long and then you're taking your Saturday to roughshod over your family to get the house clean. You're not doing any laundry during the week. You know, it's easy to put a load of laundry on after everybody gets through with their baths at night and then stick it in the dryer the next morning while you're getting ready to go and do whatever you need to do. Stop procrastinating. You're wasting time that could be spent loving and making memories with your family. Because you've procrastinated all week long. This breaks my heart. It literally breaks my heart. Because this is the way you've done it your whole life. This is the way your mama did it. This is the way my mama did it. But you know, when you, when you do something every day, it becomes a habit. And that habit gets strung into simple routines. You get up in the morning, you get dressed to lace up shoes, you fix your hair and face, and then you do something in your house. You can break weekly home blessing up into one thing each week. We got a picture that you can print out on our, our page where our control journals are. Somebody put a link into that uh, weekly home blessing done one thing each day. How can you fix it? You do your routines. You do your before bed routine. You do your morning routine. You declutter five minutes each day. Five minutes in the morning. If you can do more, do it. Don't put your family on the back burner. That's what you're doing with your procrastination. That's the devil using your home to separate you from your family. Don't do this. Six to eight hours? I don't know what's going on at your house. Six. To, I probably don't even spend 45 minutes a day getting supper in the crock pot getting dressed to lace up shoes, putting in a load of laundry, doing my morning and afternoon and evening routines. It's a total of 45 minutes. And most of it's getting ready for the next day. So don't do this to your family. You haven't been listening to me, have you? It's been going in one ear and out the other. I know this works. I know it works. A load of laundry keeps you from having to do 10 loads on the weekend.
procrastination is a tool of the evil one. And when I just listened to a, a little short on YouTube, and it was about whenever there is temptation in your life, temptation to procrastinate, God gives you a way out. How do I wash my washing machine? I smell an odor and it, it's even when it's completely empty. Well, Justin just posted three videos that talk about how to clean your front loading washing machine. And if you don't have a washing machine like Justin has, I'm sure you can find the model number and look it up on YouTube and you can find a way to clean it out. What happens is stuff gets in this filter and it and it, it's just he'll show you how to do it. But if it doesn't match your washer and dryer, then <clears throat> you may have to find on on uh, YouTube your washer and dryer, or mainly your washer. These and, and most of the time you're using too much soap. This is what I hear all the time. You're using too much soap. <clears throat> How many inches is the necklace you wear? It looks like it's the perfect length for what I'm wanting. Well, the only one I've worn lately goes down to right here, and it's 24 inches. I do have a cross that I'm not wearing right now that is, um, it's not six, it may be 18 inches. I'm struggling with keeping my before bed routine consistent, consistent, which makes my mornings even more chaotic. How can I push myself to accomplish it without saying I'm too tired? You're trying to do it all at one time. Your before bed routine starts right after you have dinner. You, you get your dishwasher loaded. Last night I went and got us dinner. And while I was getting us dinner, Robert unloaded our dishwasher. You know how I knew he unloaded the dishwasher? He There's certain things he won't put away. <laughs> and he leaves them on the counter. Start right after dinner. Get your kitchen clean. That's shot in your sink. Load your dishwasher. If you need to run it, run it. But sometimes I don't run my dishwasher until about 9 o'clock after I've had my bath and different things. Because I don't want to run out all my hot water. But when you hear yourself saying, I'm too tired, that is your cue to get up and Look at your calendar. Write your before bed routine down on a note card. And when you hear yourself say, I'm too tired, that's because you waited too long. So do it earlier in the evening. Set an alarm on your phone. Set an alarm on your phone. And... <clears throat> Get it done. Get it done. I have an alarm that goes off at 730. That gets me started on my before bed routine. At 10 o'clock, I have another alarm. And by the time midnight rolls around, I've done my before bed routine. When I take a bath, I pick my clothes out for tomorrow. I take off clothes, I pick out clothes for tomorrow. So put your routine on a note card. Keep it handy. I've noticed in several sinks, people have metal grating in them. What's the purpose of the metal grating? 
the new sinks come out with that, I think it's to keep things from hitting the bottom. You know, like dropping something that it's like a cushion. I don't know. I'm glad mine doesn't have it because it would get dirty underneath it. Because Robert rinses out. I mean, he rinses out the cat food little things, and and it's um. <clears throat> I have to keep my sink clean and shiny, and so I go in after he has rinsed out the cat food stuff because there's little bits of cat food, and not fun. Not fun. He doesn't run enough water to swish it all around and rinse it down the sink. And as a result, we're starting to get these little tiny gnats. And I've got to, y'all know the problem. I've had it too. I got it too. So I don't know why that metal grating's there, but it looks pretty. You know, people complain about rinsing dishes before you put them, you know, commercials on TV, rinsing dishes. Well, when you start with a sink full of hot soapy water, you maybe only have one gallon of water in that sink with soap in it. And you drop dishes down in that. You can use a dish pan that will make the water a little deeper. The dishes practically rinse themselves. Okay. When things become too cluttered, my anxiety kicks in and I feel so overwhelmed. When this happens, it keeps me from even attempting to do it. Why am I like this? Plus, it'll only get worse if I don't start. Well, the fact that you recognize that you have this anxiety, I want you to pray. I want you to ask, I want you to rebuke the demon of anxiety that's that is causing you to procrastinate and not put things away. Set your timer. You know, God's going to give you a way out of this. You just got to ask him. Set your timer for two minutes and do two minutes worth. That can't, that's not going to give you anxiety. But when you start to feel that anxious feeling, rebuke it and get on with your life. You don't have time. You don't have time. Rebuke the demon and he has to flee in the name of Jesus. Do it. So don't allow, pick up and put away at the top of every hour. If you wait all day, then it's going to become too much. Several days I'll be so productive and feel proud of myself. Then I'll just stop because I'm exhausted and the entire house is a mess. How can I be productive every day? God, give me patience. Please give me patience, Lord. You do your before bed routine. That's what we're practicing right now. Do your before bed routine. It's going to start you out on the right foot. You've been pushing yourself so hard. It's what we call crash and burn. You work, 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 work. You know, used to, <clears throat> it would take me six to eight hours to clean my bathroom if I hadn't cleaned it in six months. But you know, it's never dirty anymore. It's never dirty. The worst thing that happens in my bathroom is there's a basket of dirty clothes. But not few, not too many days worth. So please stop the crash and burn by doing a before bed routine. That's the most important routine of the day. A morning routine. When you first get up, get dressed to lace up shoes. Don't stop until those shoes are on your feet. <clears throat> And pick up after yourself during the day. Pick up after yourself. And declutter a little bit every day. Why are the emails so important? I've only seen testimonials. Should 
the zone missions be in the emails? They are. It, you're not getting all our emails. Every night at 5.30 Eastern Daylight Time or Standard Time, 5.30, I send out a flight plan. And in that flight plan is the missions. Your mission and if you have children, your kids' mission. And you can do, do the kids' mission. I got to clean my glasses. So you, the emails are important because they bring you in to fly lady. A lot of the th questions I've been answering today are probably because you're not reading our emails. You're not getting our emails. You're not, impl not implementing the system. The system fits together before bed, morning routine, afternoon routine, and then we start all over again. Everything fits together. The emails keep you going. They're just... I change the times up sometimes. Right now, emails are going out at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. I may change it back, but I just, they get in your email. If your emails have stopped, um, sign back up again. Gmail's doing some weird stuff here lately. So if you're not getting our emails, you may have been unsubscribed from our emails. If you're not reading our emails, you've probably been unsubscribed. I have sliding glass shower doors. The doors are dull and, and grimy. I have tried several ways to clean them. Do you have any tips? This is the tip. A purple rag or a gray rag or a blue rag. I don't care what color rag you use. A purple rag. And you don't need soap on it because what's on your shower door is soap. So you take a wet purple rag and you start scrubbing one square foot. One square foot. This is like 18 inches, but just start with one square foot while you're in the shower and just scrub it. I learned this when I gave my sister-in-law some purple rags and she had a brand new shower and she just started cleaning her shower. She kept this in her shower and she would clean one little area at a time. And you know, by the time the week's up or two weeks is up, you'll have those shower doors sparkling and you'll do it, every, do a little bit every day. What's the best way to clean shutters and blinds? Well, to do a little bit every day. I use a, I don't have any shutters or blinds, uh, but at the office we do. And we have used this multi-wand to clean them. You close them and you run the multi-wand over them. And then you open them all the way up and you run the multi-wand over them. And then when you've got them all the way closed, you can run the multi-wand down and you get the dust off. When you mix dust and cleaner or water, you get mud, but you want to get the dust off. Now, if you have a vacuum cleaner that has a little bristle tool, um, you, could, you could vacuum them. If you have never cleaned them, start by taking... Um, I'm trying not to fall off my stool, y'all. Take your rubber scrubber and scrub your blinds like this just and that'll break it loose now you might get a little dust pile in the floor but hey that's what the carpet sweepers are for i wouldn't recommend taking them down and putting them in the bathtub i just wouldn't i don't i don't i just wouldn't do that it just makes it harder on you I'm good with washing and drying and folding clothes. I struggle with actually putting the clothes away. We're basically living out of baskets. How come I can never finish this process? 
Am I the only one like this? You want to know why you can't finish the process? Because you don't have a place to put the clothes. Your your dresser drawers, your closet is cram packed full of clothes you don't wear. So you've got to clean out a drawer for each member of the family so you can put their clothes away. It's just that simple. That simple. Now, I have a, a Rubbermaid bin. It's not Rubbermaid. I don't know what it is. But it looks like a woven basket that I put my clothes in in my bathroom. And I just... I file them like they're file folders. I reach in. I have my pants at one end and my shirts the rest of the way. And I have tank tops. <clears throat> I see it gets hot here sometimes. And I bring my basket up from upstairs. I take my basket down from my storage shelves. And there you have it. I just put them in. I file them in, turn the basket sideways and just lay everything in there and put it back in my on my little shelf. So quit living out of baskets. That use you, you don't have a place to put your dirty clothes when you have a basket full of clean clothes. And guess what? If you have cats, they will leave presents in that basket. So don't do that. That just creates more work for yourself. What tool will be best to clean ceiling fans? We've lived here for four years, and I'm just now noticing two inches of dust on them. My allergies can be so bad, and I'm scared it'll just flow through the house. When I wipe it. Well, put you a mask on. I know you've got mask left over from the, you know what. And put you a mask on. And stop your ceiling fan from blowing. Stop, stop it. Now, I've known people who have taken old. How do I say this? Old pillowcases. And put them over the, the fan blade. And use that pillowcase to catch, to catch the dust. If it's two inches thick, you may need somebody to help you. But the multi-wand does a great job with this. Because you can bend it like this. And just once... Once you get it clean, you can use this and not even have to climb to get it clean. So this multi-wand is a great tool for reaching those places that are hard to get. Now, if, if your ceiling fan is 20 feet up, you're going to need somebody to climb up there. And don't you be doing it because your life is not worth the dust on your ceiling fan. You got that? Now, you can get some 20-foot poles that screw together and put the multi-wand on the end of it and clean it, standing flat-footed on the floor. Now, you can dampen down. You can dampen your multi-wand, too. But you need to get the loose stuff off first before you... You wet it. Sue's got a great idea. She puts a sheet underneath her ceiling fan when she cleans it. I think that's a wonderful idea. Well, y'all, we did five pages of questions. Did I skip any? Time flies when you're having fun. I'm telling you. Did I skip a page? I think I got them all. Well, y'all y'all had some great questions today. Well, get your questions to Liz. We'll we'll do it again next week, same time, same bat channel. Let's read 
Let's read our Psalms today. Don't run off. It's important for you to stay to the end. It helps our algorithms when you stay to the very end. Because uh, when you, and I, I try to do my best to help people that I follow by staying to the very end. This is Psalms 139. You know all about me. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every moment, every movement of my heart and soul. You understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You can't hide anything from from the Lord. You read my heart like an open book and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. I love that. I really do love that. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. And in kindness, you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. You have laid your hand on me. This is just too wonderful, deep and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. Where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run to hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down into the realm of the dead, you're there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you're there. If I fly into the radiant sun to set, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It's impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me. For your presence is everywhere, bringing light unto my night. There is no such thing as darkness because you, because darkness, there is no such thing as darkness with you. The light, the night to you is as bright as the day. There's no difference between the two. You formed my innermost being shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How one how thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day and the number of the days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you were thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherished me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand On every shore. When I awake each morning, you're still with me. Oh God, come and slay those bloodthirsty, murderous men. For I cry out, depart from me, you wicked ones. See how they blaspheme your sacred name and lift up themselves against you. But all in vain. Lord, Can't you see how I despise those who despise you? For I grieve when I see them rise up against you. I have nothing but complete hatred and disgust for them. Your enemies shall be my enemies. God, I invite 
your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Put me to the test and and sift through all my anxious cares. See if there's a any path of pain I'm walking on and lead me back to your glorious everlasting ways. The path that brings me back to you. That is one of the most beautiful Psalms I've ever read. Wow. 139 from the Passion Translation. That is just so amazing. So y'all, be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by not crashing and burning. By doing some simple routines, simple habits. The dog is wild in the streets. Be kind to others. Be kind to others. Because it'll come back to you. That kindness will come back to you. Let the joy and the sweetness that comes from the good Lord overflow out of you and show the world that you are a child of the most high God. I'm going to put Psalm 139 on my in my happiness file because God knows us. He knows the wants and needs, the desires of our heart. He knows everything there is to know about us. We can't hide from him. So thank the Lord that he sent his son to die for us on the cross. Praise the Lord. Let your prayers be even with your praise. That balanced scale. I like for my praise to be much higher than what I ask for. I love you all. I'll catch you later. Bye.